we're going to do is just give a quick overview of the of the discipleship principles behind this and then uh, briefly survey where we're headed for the fall okay so if i could have a young person uh let's see here from that table back there could i have two of you guys pass these out don't everybody jump at once. Thank you, Joseph. And Asher, go ahead and pass these out to folks. But um, as I mentioned in the message today, we did kind of switch things up when I was preaching through Ephesians 4. In fact, what was really cool is, let me just say, can you guys hear me on in there? Okay. Um, I found earlier this week, for, well, it was the last week, for some reason, I came across a notebook that I had that I was doing church administration through um, about like eight years ago. And uh, maybe it was 10 years ago. And, and what I did is I had printed off on cardboard uh, a, a prayer sheet for everybody, everybody's names. And then what we had was discipleship uh, blocks that I was going through discipleship and, and Pastor John uh, Brackbill was doing this as well. And we're just kind of moving each person through these different phases of uh, discipleship studies. And then there were areas of, of prayer and then also uh, areas of ministry, how they get involved in ministry. Really well organized. It's really excited about it. But what was interesting is it just showed what we were doing at that time was the pastor was connecting with each person in these different discipleship lessons. And we used a couple different good books. Uh, one's Foundations uh booklet that, that goes through it's really helpful um and uh in fact i think we've done that individually with people at different times over the years but uh, a good group but as i was recognizing we would get through that and then people would leave to virginia or namibia uh or wherever it is and we would have gone through those 12 lessons with people and preached through philippians and uh so as i went through that ephesians 4 i recognized some, a couple of real big I would say errors in, in doing things that way. So if you look at this, this uh, backside where it shows a blueprint for local church disciple making, and there's some passages there. Uh, look at these two big passages as uh, kind of foundational uh, for our church in how we uh, work out Christ's command to make disciples. Of course, the one is Matthew 28 there. Uh, Jesus is encouraging the disciples to the, the command, go, well, while you're going, make disciples of all the nations. And so we move to Queens, where all the nations are, and that's where you are, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So uh, there's that first uh, step of commitment to Christ. Right? I'm committing myself as a follower of Jesus, and that is portrayed publicly through baptism but then it goes beyond that to teaching them whatsoever i've commanded you and and so in this there's several principles here uh there's this commission through jesus's authority jesus is going to give the means for accomplishing this oh let me help you guys out too here all right okay um Jesus is going to get the means to accomplish this uh, through his, his command, baptizing and teaching. But there was, there's a, there's a whatsoever I've commanded you. And he's with us to the end of the age. And at that point, I felt like we weren't doing as, as good a job as we could have with this, um, right? These, these comprehensive, right? To, to try to, Think through, okay, we, people are here probably for five years. I hope most of you are here for 50 years or until you die. But often in New York City, especially, we saw people here for about, about five years, three to five years. And, and we hadn't really, like, I just think, boy, there's so many things we should really talk about at all. And I felt like I would stand before the Lord and be accountable for that. So I really wanted to change that to be proactive in other places you don't have to do this like other places you have granddads sons and grandsons live and die in the church 
And, and that, so they don't have to think about this quite as much as saying, okay, let's be very careful because you can just teach this along the way and, and, you know, and people catch it over 15 to 20 years. But I was just like, you know, we don't want to leave it to that. We, we want to really be, try to be organized in how we orchestrate this um, uh, to try to cover principally whatever the Lord's commanded us. Okay, so the next big passage, and this is the one that convicted me, was this Ephesians 4 passage um, that the Lord gives, verse 11, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers uh, to the church. And he does so, gives them, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, right? And so uh, Pastor Andrew's job and my job as pastor teachers is to equip the saints to do the work of service for the building up of the body of Christ. And, and so at that point, we were, we were doing this growing one anotherness that, that uh, now we were small. And, and so perhaps we could keep up with it. The Lord was using it. The Lord was doing it. Um, but I was just like, you know, what? I really need to be thinking this way, equipping, providing equipment, encouragement. I can't just leave this up to chance. I can't just say, well, this is done organic. As a pastor teacher, I'm going to stand before Jesus. Not just why did you preach, but did you equip the saints for this? And I was like, I haven't done that. I've been here in Queens for four years and I haven't done that. And so, and so we shifted to where we tried to, by God's grace, think through, okay, what do we want to cover in five years to make sure everyone's on the same page to a certain extent? Like, are, do people know how to pray? Do people know how to read their Bible? They understand the Lord's table and, and baptism, the ordinances. They understand the nature of a church, sanctification, justification, some of these big ideas. So we started looking at curriculum, started to look, talking to many pastors and, and just, just started writing uh, what we would see as, as uh, primary ideas in Christian discipleship. Um, and what was cool it was so fun was seeing as soon as we stopped, I, I gave this to the church to do, it works so much better. Like if ever, if one of the first ones we did was baptism and the Lord's table and like three people needed to get baptized because I didn't need to go to each person and talk about it. Everybody talked to everybody about what the Lord's table was. And, um, and so we were, we, were actually, we were actually letting the church do its work. We were releasing the church, um, but it took organization. It took work. It took effort. Uh, as church leadership to transition to this. So that's what this is all about, okay? Uh, and, and I really feel like each year I need to preach on Ephesians 4. I almost do every year. This year we did, did Romans 12 because it says a little bit of the same thing, but I think next year we have to go back to Ephesians 4 because it's the real blueprint of this. And that's why I'm not just skipping over this. This is so important. That is how we're built up. So it's, it's not God's design that you have one pastor uh, meeting with every person in the church. Uh, I love you. I pray for you, but it really is God's design that we're all meeting with one another and encouraging one another uh, in the truth. And, and I need that. And so I need to be in a group where people are talking to me about the word. Uh, I need that just as much as, as you do. Okay. <laughs> Danny, you talk to me so much. Your voice is gone. <laughs> I give Danny free range to <laughs> confront me about anything he wants. And I sometimes say, bug me about this, Danny. And he does. He does a good job. Thank you. Um, and Pastor Andrew, too. Appreciate that. Okay. So uh, let's go from there to these stages. Okay. So now just organizationally thinking through uh, each stage in this process of people growing. One is the soil stage, and this is all of Queens. All of New York City is in this stage. And, and we just believe that there's a supernatural power in God's word that when I release it into the heart of people, people are born again. How are you born again? Through the living and abiding word of God. And, and so I, I don't necessarily have to worry. I do try to be convincing, try to be sweet, try to make friends, try to take care of people and but you know what? It's, it's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle, right? Somebody was just telling me, Jesus 
lived 30 years with his brothers and sisters and none of them became followers. How sweet was he? How much did he take care of them? And they still rejected him. You can be the sweet as you can, plant flowers, build hospitals, and still people are not going to be born again until you let the word in. there. So the word has to get in there. And so we have this, right? We have friendships, a primary means the Lord uses. And so we meet, meet friends, but we have to let the word in there. Preaching, and we do that uh, one-on-one. We do that uh, on the street through panning out uh, flyers, but, but uh, preaching from the pulpit, community involvement, community Bible studies, seminars, neighborhood outreach. We're getting back to this. We're able to do this. Actually, our next, I'm going to get to that, but the one we're doing this time works well for evangelism too. So we would encourage you to invite a friend to your smaller group meeting. Somebody believes, is baptized, and then they move to this sapling stage. Um, and, and so we try to put them with another person to, to be more of a mentor with them. And uh, so actually, I'll just put it this way. Th- these, there's a group of studies, and, and it's on the back sheet, that is all about evangelism. And we'd love love for small group Bible studies to be done outside the church with, with anyone you can get to sit down and read the Bible. It doesn't have to be one of these. Let's read the Bible together. That's a great way to see people born again. Uh, read the Gospel of Mark with them. And, and then after they come to know the Lord, baptized, then this is the next next phase. It's just a, uh, eight lessons, quick, go through the basics of Christianity. And uh, right now, uh, there's, there's two folks doing that right now. Uh, the, the young man will be baptized here in a week. So that's the sapling stage as we connect people one-on-one. Uh, what we've realized is that we're s- skipping this with people is probably not, not a good idea. So we're backing up, and as people come new, we're going to, uh, going to go through these lessons with them. There would just be four lessons uh, with, with folks uh, in this first booklet. Okay, so we're going to be doing that in this next series, as you'll see. Then the strengthening stage, and that's where we all are until we die. We'll all be strengthening one another. Okay, so moving over to how that looks uh, here. Uh, Just the different topics and scriptures that we're looking at for each of those stages. The soil stage. Uh, Do you know God is a five-lesson Bible study on the gospel? Do you obey obey God is a Bible study on the Ten Commandments? Because, Marcia! Hey! Welcome! Good to have you! Hey! My heart is joyful. (laughs) All right, and Trephine, too. Trephine, Marcia's been in Florida. That's why I didn't say Trephine! (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Good to have Marcy and your feet. The, the, uh, the lady of honor is right over here at this table. We're just, I, I'll be, I'm going to keep moving here though. What are we on time? Okay. Give me 10 to 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, so these, you know, biblical worldview is actually what we're doing uh, for the fall. Uh, Genesis 1 through 11. And I, I say this is both building and evangelistic because Genesis 1 through 11 does help us with understanding the fall and actually uh, do you know God critical questions talk about creation and the fall as well but Genesis 1 through 11 walks through those chapters again and and uh, surveys uh, deeper into those and so that's what we're going to be doing in our small groups for the fall Um, it's this one here do you see as God sees Pastor Andrew wrote that one uh and uh, really good study, really helpful study. We've done it is, is in an adult Bible study a couple years ago. And now we're asking you to do it with one another. And also thinking evangelistically. Maybe there's someone that, that wouldn't come to church, but they'd come over to you, you know, with your small group and, and connect in that way. I think that's a good first step with people. I do want to do this one in our local um, diner as well. Uh, and so... You know, we'll be able to do that, announce that in the fall, probably on Tuesday evenings and just walk through it for Tuesday evenings in a row. Um, if you want to bring someone, we'll do it that way too. Okay, then, then this next is the sapling stage. I mentioned that. And then you have all this mess. <laughs> it's not a mess. Uh, 
but but here after baptism comes uh this is the the four-year uh hopefully and it's not it's it's so hard to do it in four years because what we recognized is the small groups are harder to do and we started off asking you to do four of those a year and there were like three of those a year and then we're like okay how about two of them a year and i some of that's covid but also people get busy and i recognize that and so we've just had to kind of back off the 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 small groups what we're calling grace groups the small group setting right here uh loving individuals furthering edification right so this group of of beginner studies uh and we've added some to these are these groups of three and four where we're really wanting to see us connect together i'm unto you i'm unto you and and so this is even someone who's not a teacher should be able to do this uh, and that's why we're designing them this way with not a lot of blanks there's questions to discuss but but teachers do really well with just text and and big ideas and they can elaborate on that and go on forever that may be where you're suited and gifted but what we want is a curriculum where where someone who's just born again three weeks ago they are a disciple maker right we we want peter and james the first month to be going out and reaching their brothers and sisters that's what jesus intends uh and and so uh you don't have to be a teacher to do this you just have to say hey let's get together and let's talk about this. You can love to be behind the scenes, but, but we're all to be disciple makers. And that happens when we get together, we pray together, and we talk about the Bible together, get through the Bible together. Uh, so, so we've done some of these. Uh, I really feel like as we were doing it, we're like four years before someone talks about how to pray and, and develop a devo daily devotional walk. We can't wait that long. And so that's why we started that middle five steps uh, bible truths for new christians uh, so we cover all of it at the beginning and they get it more deeply uh in the four to five year and again this this is different for new york city right uh it's it's taking these principles and adapting them to to our community and and changing it as we go as as we get input as we talk to you please give more input um and uh so we're putting we're changing these some uh, putting other studies in there. Okay. So, and then this other group here are what we're going to call uh, Bible study hour. Uh, we've done this in the past. And yet again, we just had pastors teaching it. And so we're changing this to where folks that in the church who are gifted in teaching uh, are able to teach in this. Uh, and so we're starting out in two classes. Uh, but I would love to do more than that. Uh, but it, honestly, we've been doing these 3 p.m. things to see kind of how much uh, how much response we'll have um, to see how small we can make the classes. Right now, I, we're, we're planning on, generally speaking, 40 and younger, generally speaking, 40 and older are two different classes. And then as, if those classes are more like 20 in each, we'll break those down more. Uh, because it, there is a there's a similarity of life. The other ones we don't do that. We want we want it not age graded, or situation in life graded as much. But these we're we're going to try that to see if connecting with people very similar to you in life circumstance uh, will help you connect with one another. So this will be a lot more uh, just highlights. So what are we doing for the fall? Let's see here. Where are my young people? Did they leave? Okay. All right. So I need old people. <laughs> we need to hand these out. They're you're very young, very young, very. Oh, Joshua. So pass those out. So this is the fall schedule. <laughs> this looks very. It looks very. confusing as confusing as the other one until we just walk through it okay so it's not confusing okay so here are our fall studies um the the bible study group i'm really excited about 
uh, that, that we're doing the age graded thing for the first time. And listen, if you say, I would rather not do that, why don't you do all men or all women? But we thought about that. We're like, we already have a ladies fellowship and a men's fellowship. So, so we'd like to have it men and women. Um, and you say, well, I don't want to be with just, that's fine. Then be with the younger group. I don't know, or be with the older group. And that's okay. We're not going to be crazy about this yanking you out uh, on your birthday. But uh, uh, that, that's the idea. And they're going to be doing the book of Philippians. In fact, I, I have that booklet somewhere. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good curriculum. Uh, I would like us uh, to, to hire people to write these to be uh, to all match. But right now, we don't have someone writing the Philippians one. Uh, I have others writing these other ones. Uh, but not right now, we don't have someone writing Philippians. So found a, a good curriculum that does very similar to what we want to do. Uh, gives a lot of help for the teachers, and then it has a companion study for uh, for those who are in the class. Uh, but we, we just want to give opportunity for others to teach. Um, and I think as, as the church grows, as these classes grow, it'll help with that as well. Um, but what we're seeing is this 3 p.m. hour. We would love to have it every Sunday, but it really would take away from our Lord's table meetings if we try to do both of those at once. Is that Lord's table, we're all going to keep together still. It's such a sweet family time. So you see there, we have uh, Lord's Table. Um, that will be next Sunday with Chris Seawright. But then, then we have a baptism. Uh, then this starts. I can do it up here. Um, the, the breakdown starts. Okay, so September 12th, the baptism. Uh, small groups starts now. And that's going through this, do you see as God sees? Uh, intro and creation you have till like the end of september for that that's so easy right meeting once every three weeks that's possible we could do that uh you may want to meet together uh more than that and that's fine too uh in uh class here we'll have one here and one upstairs is what we're thinking for now uh probably around around the table um we'll be starting with lesson one in philippians that's starting september 19th and again, if these classes are 20, we'll break them down further. I would like that. I'd like about seven of them uh, with, with 100 in each. No. Uh, okay. I'm also going to be starting this. Whoops. What had happened there? Um, going through this with folks who are uh, new at Grace, and I've talked to you. I've already talked to several of you about doing that. Uh, so those of you who I've talked to, uh, will be in that with me, uh, or Pastor Andrew. And what we're thinking about is that, that, uh, that uh, that's not us doing all the discipleship, but that is allowing us to connect with new people. And it's also helping us to get a little foundation to know where folks are, like uh, just finding out someone doesn't really know how to pray well, and, and they've been in our church for two years. Like we, we should have gone through that with them earlier. And so we're, we're thinking just because someone comes new, that doesn't mean I would try to be on the same page on some of these things. Okay. So I'll be doing that with, with folks uh, here starting September 19th, lesson one and lesson two. And then this one is our small groups uh, with group guides. So what we do with that, if you're a member, we want you to be a group guide. And, and the membership is, is not a, it's not necessarily as much for you. It just says you agree with the doctrine and purpose of Grace Baptist Church. And as soon as you do that, commit to that, then we ask you to be a group guide and you say no. No, it has to be a group guide, and it is up to you, but I keep asking each one, because I, honestly, I do believe this is make disciples of all the nations. There is a way our, our church organizes that. It's not just organic. Say, well, the believers will do that. Okay, but as a pastor, it's my job to try to encourage, prod along, and help. Um, you may say, well, that person's more mature than me that's in my group. That's okay. That's Okay right? Because you're in the group to be built up too. You're just organizing it. And as you are together, you're growing one another. It's not that one person is growing everybody. It's that everybody is one another then. The elbows with the arm and the kneecap. But until we, like, we worship together and we talk together, we have so many meetings, but, but this is an organized way to pray for one another and love on one another around the word, okay? So that's what the, the small groups are. We've called this life groups in the past. We're switching it to grace groups uh, just, just, it's totally what we're doing by name only. It's just, 
just grace because our church is named grace okay and uh and i think pastor andrew didn't we get don't we have a a website link at least bought do we have a website link bought do you know is okay. you asked do we have a website link, link? didn't we do maturechurch.com or something like that um it's we're waiting for uh go daddy to reach to to respond to us we're exploring gracegroups.org but it's not happened yet okay i think we'd have to buy it from someone okay the the next sphere of this and we have book studies in this we have things that we we just feel like a teacher should be going through like soteriology um and and those are churches producing and we're, we're borrowing from other curriculum um this will be the first the next one we do in that class setting is uh, bibliology. And uh, so Mark Ward wrote this one. We have another guy writing uh, soteriology right now, Leighton Talbert, very good writers, right? I don't care if I write it. Uh, it's not about that. It's about us overseeing as elders, what our church is going through and making sure we're trying to teach all that he's commanded and we're trying to equip the church to do it. That's what this is all about. Okay. Hey, this is working. I have three minutes for questions. <laughs> I can't believe it. So when will we be meeting? And so the, the first column is going to be the 3 p.m. between the two services, right? Yes. And then yes. the small group? So, so this one uh, here is is uh, 3 p.m. and whenever else I can fit it in with folks. This one here is 3 p.m. each Sunday. We used to do that early and we'll just see, like if there's a big group of folks that would rather meet at the office at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., maybe we can make that work. Um, but right now we're thinking, this is a big reason we switch to one and four because it allows us to do something together that's a teaching uh, young adult, I mean, uh, a teaching study, adult Bible study that we used to do, but honestly, we weren't able to get it all together uh, because it was meeting in the office early, and, and we offered those on YouTube, but it was just, it's just hard to do that in the office. It's too full, so this 3 p.m. is going to work. We, we may need to do it at the office early as well for maybe a third class. That's 3 p.m. That's going through Philippians, yes. No. Okay. Oh, yes. This here is Philippians, 3 p.m. And then what's the left-hand side of the center column? That is the uh, new folks going through the eight lessons on uh, Christian discipleship. That's this uh, welcome to the family, the sapling stage. So, so there's probably 10 folks that I'm asking you to do that just to get to know you more and uh, see where, where you are. And, and I think as we go, we'll always be doing that with new people instead of waiting three years and recognizing, oh, we should have talked about that a long time ago. The, the, the elders will be doing that. It also lets us get to know people on a personal level. And that's what time? That will be at 3 p.m. too. Oh, so we'll have two adult classes, yeah. Um, two adult classes going on and then the new uh, welcome class too. Uh, it's, it's called an introduction to your Christian family, new Christian family. That one, but we really would rather this. That's just new people that come to the church. We would really rather you're leading someone to Christ and you go through that with them. At that point, it's not a pastor, it's you. And, and you are mentoring that person. And that's the ideal, that, that you walk somebody through the gospel of Mark, they become a Christian, then you walk them through that. And then they join your uh, small group um, as well. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Sunday, but during the week, it was completely empty. You know, we were with the elder and deacon, the New York Episcopal Secretary, Doug Wood. Okay. That yeah, a lot of churches do this this way. Yep. Or a Sunday school class. Yeah, they had that too. My, my only point is that however you want to call the grace, that there should be an official elder or deacon, somebody conducting the service. Yeah. So you're saying it should be done. I'm not saying anything wrong against private Bible study, but I was, in my mind, I would much rather have an option to have some official elder or deacon or someone conducting the service. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what we backed out of, um, and uh, and so we do that because we feel like every member should be a disciple maker, and if every member agrees with the doctrine of the church, then then we would entrust that to them, and it's not a, a big deal. I understand a, a lot of churches just do it that way, and uh, I just love unleashing every member, and they don't have to be a deacon or an elder uh, to to teach one another, and not to teach one another but to be one anothering. Um, and, and so that would be one uh, major difference here in, in this uh, organizational. And, and I think it's, I think I love that part of it. And you may say, Tim, that's giving too much uh, say to someone. What are they going to say? You know, the, the Lord's going to do that. The Lord's going to take care of that. And, and we do, ideally what happens is uh, our, our deacons would be, would be able to be over three of the small groups to help see the, the, the physical needs of that group. And the elders would be over three or four to see the spiritual needs of that group. And, and that's the way we'll organize it as we go. Yes, Dave. What about the members of the Zoom class? Yeah, the 3 p.m. I think we will uh, make available that way. Um, probably just like this. It's just it's a little difficult, but but we'll we'll make it work. The far right, uh, no sign yet on that. No, this begins now too. Now, uh, so this is what we're asking all the members to to leave, and uh, we have a membership meeting coming up. So I'm just kind of waiting till that's done to see who how many group guides we have. Uh, but but that will begin very soon. And that one, this maybe clarify for those of you who are new. That one, everybody meets it whenever they can. And so that's totally up to the group guide. Some of them meet on phone. Some of them meet in person in their house. Some of them meet um, at, at a coffee shop. You know, So those are totally up to the group guide. And that just really frees them up to invite a friend and to uh, organize it that way. OK, any other questions, comments, snide remarks? let me just say this it's just what we're trying i'm not huge i mean it's like i just felt like if i wasn't going to try to do this i would stand before the lord and he would he would i would be culpable for ephesians 4 if i didn't try something and and i just didn't see anything that i liked i mean southern baptists do a huge job of sunday school they do a really good job but i felt like that just leaves it for the teachers you're on mic leaves this small group feel to three or four people really growing one another it, it leaves that out and and we need that in our church in our city we need we need us this smaller really know one another and what's interesting is i try to reorganize these and you won't let me because you're so into one another you get you become so ingrained in helping one another like let's try to break this up and so diana and becky's group now has like 12 people like, come on, ladies, you got to break this up, all right? But they start scratching me. No, they don't. They punch my face. Uh, and uh, Marcia's group, too, did that. But COVID has really hurt this. Yeah. And so we're just doing this to really emphasize it again. Let's, let's try it. Let's do it, okay? Because we need to. We, this is more important than our physical health. And you can do this by, by distance. You can do this by distance. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll just have to play that by ear. I, I trust that we'll be done with the 4 p.m. service by the end of the year, at least. But we'll see. We're just going to have to play it by ear. And we thought we were done, and, and then, right, COVID's making a comeback here. So, uh, but ideally, we're done with this before the end of the year. And then we have a larger 1 p.m. service. It's a little easier. You don't have 
the 3 p.m. can just go for an hour, you know, and, and it's not as hard and fast 40 minutes. So any other questions, comments? I, got, uh, I have a question. Yes, Bob. Is, is the biblical worldview material available, hard copy? Yes, it's right here. I have plenty of copies. Okay. So you see as God sees. Uh, that's also available on Kindle. Okay. And uh, what we do is when we offer this to the church, we offer it for free. The Philippians one, we are going to have to charge. Uh, I think it's like $5 a booklet if you want the student's edition, but you don't need that. Uh, but we, uh, what we do is we lower this to cost at, with Amazon and they print it for like four bucks. So we're paying these authors to write and it's just going to, it's just going to grow. It's going to be a really good. It's one of my life goals to have a really good system that helps churches with this. Uh, just I, I've seen that dynamic and pastors don't want to do it. They want their hands on it, which is okay. But, but I love unleashing the church. It's been a lesson that, that I got from Ephesians four, but just watching our church do, it, it's been a blessing. There, there's, you know, Peter and James fight sometimes, right? So there's some of that. You have to work through that. And, and sometimes we get lazy or sometimes COVID comes and it's hard to do anything. And so, right, so we work through all that, but it just, it's, it's just really a neat way to apply these biblical principles. And again, totally open to changing with, with feedback from you guys. Okay, let's, let's close in prayer and thank the Lord for this. Uh, please be committed to it. Pray for it. Uh, be willing to join the church, be willing to serve as a group guide. Um, even if you're not, you know, you're just as important in that group, be in the cell groups, the grace groups, the life groups, whatever you call them. And the Lord will use this. Okay. As he uses you. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for, uh, just unleashing the church because we know that your spirit works in each one and, uh, help us, though, to be careful, because we know that, that wolves will come in from among you, and so this is important, and Lord, I pray that uh, we would all be listening to one another with the, the lens of the faith. We would know the faith, uh, that we would shepherd each other, encourage each other, build up each other, that we would be with one another, uh, building up your body. Um, I pray that you would grow this group uh, spiritually as we consider the foundations of Genesis 1 through 11 and then Philippians, uh, that we would learn how to minister one to another, encourage one another in the faith. Um, Lord, grow your body, not just deep, but numerically. We pray that these classes would grow to where we have to split them down further. Um, Lord, that's in your hand. We just preach, we just sow, and you give the increase, but I pray that you would. Uh, we would love to see this building full uh, and overflowing. Um, Lord, uh, uh, we pray that uh, for your glory's sake, because you're the head of the church, and according to your promises, we pray that. Uh, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're dismissed. Thank you guys for your patience. Thank you.